Higher Education Minister Thang Sayanda Blade Nzimande worried about the rate of university students dropping out. He's highlighted the disparity in the number of students who graduate as a proportion of those who started in primary school. The minister says the lack of graduates also contributes to the country's high unemployment rate. So how can we ensure that more students don't drop out and that those qualifications actually get them employed? The spokesperson for the Department of Higher Education and Training, Ishmael Nisi, joins us now uh, via our video link. Ishmael, it's great to talk to you as we focus here as a channel on youth unemployment. And of course, it goes back to the classroom, doesn't it? And some of the challenges that we face now insofar as getting our primary school pupils all the way through to matric and then getting them a university uh, qualifications, um, th those challenges set even further back now by this quest to still recover from the impact of COVID-19. Well, good morning, uh, Michelle. Certainly, um, COVID-19 had a setback in as far as uh, our education system in the country is concerned, both um, the elementary uh, system and the post-school education and training system. However, uh, we, we know that um, government and both the sectors have placed uh, systems to make sure that uh, education and teaching continues uh, regardless of the you know, uh, I mean, in the midst of COVID-19, uh, but definitely it had an impact in as far as the matriculants who passed uh, to uh, their 2022, uh, 2021 um, matriculation uh, examinations, and also those that um, have to graduate uh, within the post-school education and training system. So, Ishmael, where do we begin? Because this study done by Stellenbosch University tracks just how far behind students are as, as a result of COVID-19. There's, there's one line that li that's listed here that talks about uh, grade nine learners in 2021 performing more than a year behind uh, grade nine learners um, two years earlier, so in 2019. So in essence, what the study is saying is that learners like this affected by COVID-19 need more than a year of recovery outside of their normal schooling so that they can be ready to write their matric exams? Well, we know as the Department of um, Higher Education and Training that the Department of Basic Education is doing all it can to support uh, the, the learners uh, in order for them to succeed in their studies. We are working together with them in as far as uh, career development is concerned through our career uh, system um, um, uh, of the department. And we are quite happy that the support that has been given to make sure that our learners uh, uh, gravitate towards um, post-school education and training is supported. And for us, post-school education and training, it means uh, access to universities, mm -hmm. access to Tibet colleges, and uh, also uh, to uh, community education and training colleges, supported by the very large uh, CETA setup that we have in, in the country. As we know that um, for us as the Department of Higher Education and Training, we are not only focused on the universities, but we are focused on those students who also are not in education, who are not in training, uh, that have fallen out of the crack of, of, of the schooling system. Our departmental mandate is to make sure that all the youth of our country are given an opportunity to be trained in one way or the other. So in as much as um, we might have been affected by uh, COVID-19 and other historical reasons that we know on our educational system, there is a lot that government is doing to make sure that there is no a uh, young person who is left out of the uh, education system, both uh, at, the, at the primary and at the post-school education and training yeah. system. So, so that might be the aim by our government department, Ishmael. But are we fighting a losing battle here? Because the numbers bear out a very different picture to the optimistic one that you're trying to paint this morning. In fact, Bladen Zamanda himself saying that around 4% of students that start in grade one in South Africa end up with degrees. The minister expanding that number, he says, out of 100 students that start grade one, 12 of those access university education and only six of them complete four with a degree so my question for you ishmael because i know it's not just a single departmental question here 
but how do we get our students into school? How do we keep them into school? How do we get them a post-trick, uh, post-matric education? Because we're failing to do that. Uh, Michelle, let's contextualize what the minister was saying. The minister specifically was, re uh, was referring to the enrollment at our universities. Now, explaining um, uh, to, the, to the sector that uh, he was addressing uh, when he mentioned those statistics that we need to develop more capacity through our Tibet uh, education system because the number of students, as you have indicated in terms of statistics, that go into a university sector are decreasing. Now, there are those students who fall out of the crack, and that's why the Tibet College system must be uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, expanded in order for it to be able to absorb all those students who are unable to fit in into the university system. Now, that's why there are programs that we are having in place to make sure that we massify enrollments at our Tibet College, we massify enrollments at our community education and training colleges, because of the reality, uh, Michelle, is that the majority of our young people are not currently enrolled in our universities. Although our education system is university-centric now, we want to dismantle that uh, in order for us to focus on the skills that our education, uh, I mean, our economy needs through um, uh, providing appropriate um, uh, uh, education and training uh, through our Tibet College, through our community education and training colleges, and even through our CITAS, which are 20, 21 of them, which are having various skills that they offer and uh, a, a certification that they offer to uh, uh, learners that um, are enrolled within those. So the minister's is issue was that let's not be university centric mm -hmm. because the reality is that we need more skills in various areas of competencies that is required by our uh, economy yeah. and our yeah. country in general. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that issue because that was my next question to you. How, because we've been having in one form or another the same conversation for many, many years, Ishmael, around um, keeping our children in school, um, trying to ensure that they get jobs post their matric qualification, however that might look. The unemployment yeah. numbers, we saw a, a marginal increase in the number of jobs in our economy in the first quarter of this year. But insofar as youth unemployment is concerned, 65% of young people are still sitting at home without a job. So when we talk about qualifications that are not just centered around university qualifications, are various government departments tackling this problem from all angles? So the Department of Basic Education, Higher Education, even the Transport Department, insofar as getting students to those interviews, getting students to those job opportunities um, in a context where people spend so much of their money on the cost of transport, for example. How much um, intergovernmental department cooperation is there to try and tackle youth unemployment? Well, thank you for that uh, question, uh, Michelle. Michelle, um, uh, the minister announced in his budget vote that we are working on what we call a one skill strategy for South Africa, which is an interdepartmental skills strategy to make sure that um, all uh, departments in government are identifying areas within their competencies of scar skills, of skills that are required by our economy, so that uh, we, as we design our curriculum in, in the Department of Higher Education and Training, we exactly zoom in into those pertinent skills, those scar skills uh, that we know that our economy needs. So that at the end of the day, we are able to um, make sure that we produce skills uh, through the curriculum that is informed by government, through the curriculum that is informed by our, our, our uh, private sector uh, partnerships that the um, minister has been speaking a lot about them, that we need more of private companies that uh, will uh, uh, work with us to ensure that our curriculum is aligned to what is happening in the industry. But I must indicate that um, there is intergovernmental collaboration to make sure that uh, we produce the skills that our economy uh, needs. A lot still needs to be done because we are coordinating uh, from uh, the Department of Higher Education and Training and we are coordinating as well uh, from the Department of Science and Innovation, of which we making sure that uh, uh, through the decadal plan of science and innovation, 
we work uh, with all the government departments to make sure that we also uh, exploit the innovation that our young people have and we make it uh, profitable at the end of the day to, to, to them and to the economy. And through the Department of uh, Higher Education and Training, we then provide the necessary skills, including the injection of uh, uh, money to make sure that for those uh, uh, youth or young people who are coming from the poor uh, uh, and, and working class background are provided. As you know, that we are doing a lot in as far as supporting uh, uh, that sector of students and including uh, now working towards a comprehensive uh, loan scheme uh, 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 or funding uh, a scheme for those that are outside of what the, currently the National Student Financial Aid Scheme is providing for. So we are doing all we can to make sure that we support our young people with skills and also with funding. One just wonders when all of these different government initiatives will bear the kind of fruit that we need to see in our country as we lament the high uh, youth unemployment number, 65% of young people sitting at home. Ishmael Misi, let me thank you for your time this morning.